restaurant Stanley Alemi. And uh, my business name, or the name of my business is Alesta Medical Center. Alesta is actually, I picked it from my two names, Alemi and Stanley. I picked the first three letters of Alemi, the A L E, then are the first three letters of Stanley, S T A. So to make the rest, we offer health services to the community that we are in here in Ediofe and those that are around town. I would say Arua City has a lot. Actually, from what we learned from the training, there are quite a number of things that have impacted my life and in the business as a whole. One, we're trying to. We learned that there are customer jobs that we need to accomplish, or the expectations as to why they need other business premises or other health facilities that offer the same or similar services that I do offer here. So I've learned to address their needs. Customer satisfaction during service delivery is another thing that I've learned in the business training. There are a lot of gaps in the health sector that we feel we should package and um, probably address. For instance, uh, 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 the line of uh, maternal child health, but specifically women who are in the reproductive age. We find over 60 to 70 percent of the women that we receive here suffer from reproductive health challenges. And I think if the Americans could come in give us an aid so that we can reach out to these ladies in the community, I think we shall be able to address most of their reproductive health challenges and even the children that we are seeing. Alesta Medical Center is the name of my business and uh, we normally say your health is your wealth so when you're healthy you can run around and earn. My name is Russia Stanley Alemi. I made uh, that name Alesta from the two names of Alemi and Stanley, the first three letters of Alemi and then Stanley to make Alesta. Before we came into business in 2020, from 13th of uh, January, we went to the market and saw what challenges that uh, people are faced with. People are facing actually when it comes to uh, offering uh, health services. We raised uh, a number of uh, private health facilities. They charge the levy on those clients that they go services or the patients is very high. Secondly, you find that delays or time wasted in delivering the health services or the packages. Inadequate or lack of client cost, client or customer care has also been another challenge that uh, health care facilities are being actually facing. Then inconsistencies at uh, health facilities. You find a client goes into the consultation room, for instance, in the Royal Hospital or another private facility, and then is referred to a medical radiology center for an investigation. It makes it quite inconvenient. So, what have we come up as a Leicester Medical Center? As a Leicester Medical Center, we're offering quality, affordable health care packages, timely. And we're also mindful, we are very mindful about the safety of our patients and in the customer care that customers need to get. Many times when you go to these private facilities or to these other government entities where health services are offered, you find the mother is tossed here or any other client is tossed here and there, so they don't have a very good experience when they go to those facilities. So Alesta has come here to address all those challenges. 
what is our market opportunity? We're looking at West Nile as a whole with a total population of about 2.9 million. You can see the statistics there, 2.988 and 300 people. That is what uh, West Nile is comprised of, according to UPAS. And the market we're looking at in Arua city is about 309,052. But out of all these, what we are looking at is about half of that total population Arua has. So that tells you that we are looking at only 2% for the start. So once everything gets better, we we'll look at others later on. How do we get to our clients? Or how do we get to interact with our clients? When they come to our facilities, we of course interact directly in the consultation rooms or when they come at the pharmacy to have a purchase of drugs, we're able to interact with them directly. And through outreaches, we have both extension services. Like today, we have uh, three staff, Malay staff who have gone to Bura to offer a sexual and reproductive health service. It is an outreach that we are offering. So that is how we relate with our clients and also through the social media platform, we are able to interact with uh, those who cannot directly come to us, but have got our contacts, for instance, our WhatsApp. They're able to ask us questions, I have this and this, how they go about with it. We ask you to do this and few things. If we find it's not helping you, you come back to our facility and engage us directly, one on one. Customer relationship. How do we get our clients? One, I normally have radio talk shows on a real one. I have radio talk shows in uh, Access FM, including a voice of life. So when the clients, all those listeners listen to us, or listen to our programs, we're able to get them to come to our facilities. We have outreaches that we conduct. That was at um, Kajulu. I don't know exactly where the site is, but we're able to reach to our clients through that. Once we get them, they're able to come to us. We also have what we call a facility-based mobilizers and PhDs or village health team. They're able to reach to the clients and then through that we're able to receive the clients at the facility. What are our revenue streams and then probably the cost structures? One, we have a pharmacy in within the clinic. I know at times, uh, in most of these facilities in town, they don't care because you find that uh, you may not be able to go over the counter purchase of drugs, but at a Leicester Medical Center, at any time when you come, even if you have 50 shillings, they are able to buy your panadol. That is how we raise money. And in the laboratory, we are able to have very many tests that uh, help us in generating revenue. We do minor surgeries and others, and then removal of foreign bodies. This helps us to generate revenue. When it comes to our cost structure, where we normally have expenses, one, rent is one of it. Secondly, uh, the salaries of our, of our employees, their welfare, the stationaries, and then the cost of moving from a Leicester Medical Center in Ethiopia up to Bura Custom to offer sexual reproductive health service is the cost in transport. What are our competitive analysis? When you look at Alesta, it is open about uh, a very good for a very long period of time. From seven up to midnight, you find our place open for any service you want, be it pharmaceutical, consultation, lab, admissions, you always find us vis-a-vis -vis these other different uh, facilities that you see within the city suburbs. What has it been from the day start? From when Alesta started. We started Alesta on the uh, 13th of January 2020 when we were about a few minutes to the lockdown. From that time up to now, we have so much impacted as far as sexual reproductive health is concerned. When you look at that, it's a very big thing, but the components are there. Immunization is one, family planning or modern contraceptives is another, antenatal care, postnatal care is another. But mainly you find ladies within this reproductive uh, help. We offer them modern contraceptives that helps to control the fertility. In so doing, you find we reduce the 
cases of an safe abortion. When you don't offer those contraceptives, you find ladies have sexual intercourse, and then when they're not ready for the child, they terminate using unsafe methods. So we, as a Lester, we offer sexual and reproductive health, and from that time up to now, we have so much eliminated cases of unsafe abortions, and the uptake of contraceptives in a Lester Medical Center has been in the rise. Maternal child health has also been improved. A child who is uh, five years below comes, we're able to identify the need. If it's medical or surgical, we're able to address. A mother who comes has got gynecological cases and maybe medical, surgical, able to come, we're able to address all that. So that is how far we've moved from the time we started at Leicester Medical Center. And good doctor-patient care relationship has been there. And then lastly, we are looking forward to expanding the facility in the near future. That is what we have as a future prospect. Our ask, what are we asking as a Leicester Medical Center? We don't need much. We need only $25,000. How are we going to use this fund if it comes? Basically, it's financial. We need $10,000 for a modern ultrasound scan machine that will help us to investigate these mothers who come to us with their different cases, different cases in surgical, medical, that probably patients will have to get to your from. Secondly, a breakdown of that still continues. We need about $8,000 for radio talk shows that we shall use to sensitize the population in Yofe, Arua City, and West Nile as a whole. Why we do that is because the world is heading into what we call preventative medicine. Currently, what we're practicing is curative medicine. You come with your headache, you come with your urinary tract infections, we treat. That is curative. But we need to sensitize the community so that we can address the challenges at the primary level. Training the human resource about what we're doing. Ministry of Health has got guidelines that we need to embrace. World Health Organization has got a guideline that we need to actually look through, including CDC, Center for Disease Control. All these need training. So for that, that is where the $5,000 will be invested. And then the $2,000 that you see will help us in improving our laboratory equipment so that we investigate any client who comes to a facility very well and then gets the right diagnosis. And in our team, we have got uh, one general practitioner, we have the pharmacy technician, we have two laboratory personnel, we have got two nurses, we have a cleaner, and other volunteers. Thank you so much. SMSs. We give care phone calls 
for our clients to check on who they are. And at times, practically, I myself, I get onto the motorcycle and ride to where those, those patients are to find out how they are. I think it's what we do, but except it was not clearly what we here. Regarding appointments uh, to save time, yeah, sure. I looked at IHK as a module. Dr. Thierry is one of my models that I look up to. Normally, for you to get to him, you have to book online. And it's one thing that we, I think, need to work on. I think we click it, we will need to sit and discuss that in detail. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I think. Most of our officers are readers. Emphasis on KYC is uh, quite low. For example, for all the years I've been going to the breakfast, there is a very emphasis in a lot that has interested me in having a member of data. Member of data. I mean, this takes a lot of time. Like Sarah was complaining yesterday about the staff's delivery time in our hospital. But he did go on appointment. Is his file there in our hospital that maybe they, you know, they can just go the system and. Cases is Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I think it is, it is the only area which can be a niche for your business. Thank you. Also, Neo, that aspect, that role is missing from your team, the PR and the whole that. Yeah, I think that I'm Thank you very much. Thank you.